Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart, and welcome to another edition of Breaking News. Today is Sunday. It's the 21st day of July 2024, and we're going to look today at the aftermath of Israel's attack on the Houthis yesterday and explain how it fits with the biblical scenario of the last days, because it fits in a number of different ways. Like we said yesterday, this is a huge story for its regional implications, as well as its global implications. Basically, what happened, Israel's attack on the Yemeni oil infrastructure sent a strategic uh, and a stern warning to Iran. And afterwards, Netanyahu came out and he made it very clear the strike on this Houthi port, something like 2,000 kilometers away from Israel, shows that Israel can reach its enemies however far away. And we'll talk about that. Now, there are two more important stories I wanted to get to this morning. Uh, top Secret Service officials uh, denied request for increased security for Donald Trump. For the last two years, they've been denying requests for increased uh, security for Trump and his various uh, meetings he has. And then, of course, there's another story about the woke ways of President Biden and Kimberly Cheadle's uh, U.S. Secret Service, which is beyond pathetic, how they're interested in pronouns, interested in diversity, equity, inclusion, and not that interested in protecting the uh, people they're supposed to be protecting. And again, it shows the demise of the United States, how far we've gone down in the last three and a half years. We're going to do that on our second edition today of Breaking News. We do two editions a day. We've been doing that every day since I think what May uh, two a day. We did just one a day before, but now because of the circumstances, we do two different editions of Breaking News. We try and keep them less than 15 minutes don't always make that, but we, we try and do that for your edification because you're busy, but you need to know what these headlines are all about. So we'll develop those in the second part today. Um, and they're they're very important, all four of these stories we're going to deal with. So I want to give them some time. Now, also, there's two. Uh, we want to tell you how thankful we are here. We've, we don't usually talk about this. We're going to talk about it just for a minute. We've hit a milestone here on Breaking News and our YouTube channel. We've just reached over 4 million views for the past 365 days on uh, our YouTube channel. I have a little analytic that tells me how many people watch every seven days, 28 days, and then 365 days. And we hit over 4 million for the last 365 days. We are very thankful for that. Uh, we hit yesterday 30,500 subscribers on the YouTube channel. And believe me, I'm thankful for each one of you. Now, we also have an app. We don't mention it that much. It's called Educating Our World, or EOW, with Don Stewart. You can get it in either of the app stores. And it's free. Everything's free that we do. And there's another 137,000 views we've seen on the app since we've you know instituted that a number of months ago. So thankful for each and every one of you. Thank you for supporting us, for praying for us. I uh, can't tell you how much we appreciate it. Uh, I used to write thank you notes for those who supported us, but I can't anymore because unfortunately my my right hand has um, got a bit of arthritis in it. Whenever I try to write something, it, you know, let's we'll say it doesn't work like it used to. So that's what I'm doing. Um, it, it's fine typing and the stories and that, but not writing. So I just want to thank all of you again from the bottom of my heart for uh, your prayers and support. The Lord's really blessed this because as we talked about just a couple of times, we hardly ever talk about ourselves, what we do here. When we started about 14 months ago, we have no radio station we're on, we're, no TV station we're doing anything. I don't do either of those anymore. And I don't know how people found this uh, YouTube channel, but they have, and I'm thankful for it. So thank you so much for telling others, for using our resources at, on educating our world and educating yourself on what's going on in the world today, as well as what the Bible says about who we are as Christians, why we believe it, and how to live it. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get to the stories. There's two of them we, I really want to talk about this morning, because um, they really do have global implications and huge implications for last day's Bible prophecy. And remember, if, well, if you're new to us, you won't remember. What we do here on Breaking News is not just give news stories. We give news stories that have something to do with what the Bible tells us our world is going to be like before the second coming of Christ and the events that precede it. And we have a book called 25 Signs. We're near the end, which we document that fully again on our website, Educating Our World. It's all free. And so when we look at these stories, we attempt to explain them the best we can in light of what's going on so you can understand it and you can tell others about it. All right, headline number one, Israel's attack on Yemeni oil infrastructure is a strategic warning to Iran. We mentioned that yesterday. Now we've got a couple articles that are emphasizing that. 
The strike on Yemeni oil infrastructure in Hodida, I guess how you pronounce it, is a microcosm of a larger strategic narrative. And that's the key. It's a microcosm of a larger strategic narrative. And here's the story. Israel's attack on the strategic oil refining in Yemen is more than a tactical strike in the complex a conflict between Israel and Yemen. It sends an unambiguous message to Iran. Israel can and will disrupt the energy lifeline of the Middle East. And this is the key. Energy as a critical element of national and regional security is at the heart of this strategic maneuver. By targeting essential energy assets, Israel underscores the vulnerability of its adversary's economic and military capabilities, which heavily, which heavily depend on a stable energy supply. <laughs> the Yemeni oil facility, while significant, is not the primary target of Israel's strategic calculation. Instead, it demonstrates what can be achieved on a larger scale, and here's the key, precisely a hint at the potential vulnerability of Iran's critical, critical oil infrastructure, most notably, it's called Kark Island, K-H-A-R-K. Kark Island is located in the Persian Gulf. It's Iran's principal oil export terminal, handling most of the country's crude oil exports. This facility is not merely an economic asset, but a critical node in Iran's geopolitical leverage and capacity to fund regional activities and proxies. By showcasing its ability to strike similar targets in Yemen, Israel is effectively placing Iran on notice that Kark Island and other vital infrastructure could be next. This maneuver aligns with Israel's broader strategic doctrines of deterrence and preemption. Israel has long been aware of the multifaceted threats posed by Iran, ranging from nuclear ambitions to the support of militant groups in the region. In targeting critical Yemeni oil infrastructure, Israel demonstrates its willingness to engage in unconventional and asymmetric or asymmetric warfare, disrupting supply chains and economic resources that fuel hostile activities. Moreover, the attack highlights Israel's operational reach and intelligence capabilities. And this was huge here. Yemen is not a neighboring country, and the logistics of such a strike are complex. By successfully executing this operation, Israel underscores its ability to project power across the region, reinforcing its strategic posture, deterring adversaries through demonstrated action rather than mere rhetoric. Now, this is what's huge. This was just Israel that did this. The United States was not involved. It was an Israeli strike, something like 1,700 kilometers from Israel to Yemen is how far they went. Uh, would that be about 1,100 miles, I guess, something like that? We do it that way. But the point is they did it all on their own. And they, they, the planes left from Israel. They weren't in a base somewhere halfway or in between. They flew all the way from Israel, and they came back. They've been practicing what we've been reading in some stories in, on in Greece and their takeoff and landing and what they can do and the such like. But the point is, they showed the world and they showed the their enemies, particularly Iran, as we're going to talk about Hezbollah, that they can reach anybody they want any time that they want. Now, one of the things that is encouraging in this, uh, this is not with the help of the USA, because they realize with the fading Biden administration, which basically has tied Israel's hands behind their back during the war in, in Gaza, uh, they're trying to get away from that, and they're encouraged by the fact that uh, the, the Biden administration is fading in the sunset, and hopefully Donald Trump will win in, in November. So uh, not only America can be, can be strong again, but Israel can be strong again and bring some peace to the region. This is what could very well happen. And as we said, this would set the stage for what the Bible talks about in the last days, because Israel's at a peaceful situation, not like what they're at now, but a peaceful situation when eventually Russia invades them, according to Ezekiel 38, 39. And so um, we're watching all this take place. Now, there's another heading here called regional instability, and this is another one of the keys here. This move also reminds the international community of the broader implications of regional instability. The global economy is intricately linked to the steady, foil, uh, steady flow of oil from the Middle East. Any significant disruption, especially involving major export terminals like Kark Island, would have profound economic consequences worldwide. 
By illustrating the potential for such disruptions, Israel is implicitly urging global powers to take the Iranian threat seriously and to support efforts to curb Tehran's destabilizing activities. Remember, we saw the story yesterday, Anthony Blinken said uh, Iran may be just a few weeks away from, you know, developing their enriching uranium to the place where they could build a bomb. And um, the Ayatollah years ago, we've mentioned this before, wrote a book called um, One Bomb, something like that in Farsi. And basically his whole thesis was this, I only need, we only need one bomb that can destroy Israel, the little Satan, which is one of our goals. We have to have the delivery system, which they've been working on since 2015, uh, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, which Obama put into play, had nothing to say about stopping Iran's missile development, their development of weapons systems, because you have to have the, you know, have to have two things. You have to have the weapon, the nuclear weapon, uh, and then you also have a delivery system that gets it to where it's supposed to go. Well, they've been developing the first thing, the delivery system, and they've also been working on enriching uranium where they could build a bomb. And so this, you know, has tremendous implications, obviously, not only regionally, but worldwide. And so Israel's letting people know that Iran's got to be stopped from doing something like this. And so, as the article goes on to say, in the volatile um, and interconnected world of Middle Eastern geopolitics, such messages are essential. They serve not only to deter adversaries, but to galvanize allies and neutral actors to acknowledge and address real threats. As the international community watches these developments, the clarity of Israel's message should resonate, namely the era of unchecked aggression and proxy warfare must end, and those who perpetuate it will find themselves vulnerable to the very tactics they employ. The centrality of energy in these dynamics underscores the profound impact that controls our energy re over energy resources, infrastructure, what it has on the security and the stability of nations. And so it's a huge message they are sending. Now, again, we want to remind you, this could lead, and it's possibly facing, you know, building up to this, to some type of regional war between Israel and Iran. Iran may throw everything but the kitchen sink against Israel, as we're going to see with the next story with Netanyahu's, um, his statement on this. Remember, you have the proxies from Iran, northern border of Israel, Hezbollah, which has been bombing Israel since October 8th of last year. You've got the Houthis, which, of course, just got their welcome to the club notice with the uh, 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 attack yesterday from the Israeli Air Force that got there and took uh, and took their uh, some of their strategic assets out of play. Then in Iran and Iraq, both of those countries, there are different groups, terrorist groups that are aligned with Iran and, of course, in Iran itself. And so you have, you know, of course, Gaza, uh, the has, you know, Hamas is, you know, supplied and supported by them. And so Israel's basically saying enough is enough. We're going to strike the head of the snake, and that is Iran. And we're warning them now this is what's coming next. And you saw what we can do, you know, way down south with the Houthis. We can do the same thing to you. Your island there is vulnerable. We could do this. We could, you know, destroy your infrastructure. And, and can the global economy would be in a real mess. But so be it. And this is what Israel is saying. If you don't do anything, we will do it. So we'll keep an eye on that. And again, we say if something like this happens, please, please understand this is not something predicted in scripture, directly predicted. This is not fulfilling Bible prophecy in any way, shape, or form. Bible prophecy is fulfilled when Russia leads an invasion, Ezekiel 38, 39, and Iran is one of its surrogates at that time. That's not what's happening right now. We can't emphasize that enough. And we document that, of course, in our book, 25 Signs. We're near the end in appendix, what is it, number five or six, where we talk about what's going on there is not the fulfillment of Ezekiel 38, 39. Okay, one more story quickly. <clears throat> It's from Netanyahu. He said, the strike on the Houthi port shows Israel will reach enemies however far away. So this is kind of what we talked about earlier. Israeli leaders say attack sends a message not just to Yemen rebels, but to Iran and Hezbollah. Houthi spokesman said, strike won't stop us from continuing to support Gaza. In fact, the Houthis actually sent another missile over after this that was stopped, of course. Prime Minister Netanyahu said that Israel's attack on a Houthi-controlled port in Yemen on Saturday makes it clear to our enemies that there's no place that the long arm of Israel will not reach. Three people were reportedly killed and 87 injured as the Israeli Air Force strike targeted fuel depots, energy-related sites, and other facilities at the Hodaida port, sparking massive fires. In fact, one story, one line kind of said it all, though. Everybody can see, the whole Middle East can see that, that Yemen is on fire because of what they've done to Israel. 
According to the IDF, the port has been used repeatedly to bring in weapons from Iran, and therefore Israel saw it as a legitimate military target, which it is. It marked the first IDF strikes in Yemen since the Houthis began carrying out hundreds, literally hundreds of attacks against Israel and Red Sea shipping routes in a purported solidarity with the Palestinians following the October 7th massacre. It came also a day after a Houthi drone attack on Tel Aviv killed one Israeli civilian and wounded several others. I have a message for Israel's enemies. Don't be mistaken about us, Netanyahu said in a televised statement. We will protect ourselves in every way on every front. Anyone who harms us will pay a very heavy price for this aggression. The port we attack is not an innocent port. It is used as an entry point for deadly weapons supplied to the Houthis by Iran. And so the message really resonated well with Israel, with uh, both sides of the aisle in Israel. The, the people were very happy to see it. The United States grudgingly said, yes, Israel can pay, can do this because they have to look after their own uh, <clears throat> interests there. Of course, there were warnings not to, you know, from the typical suspects, well, we don't want to engage in any type of nuclear war, so, or excuse me, regional war, so we've got to be careful here, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, I'm not doing anything about Iran, and they're getting close to um, putting together nuclear weapons, so Israel has to do something, and they're doing it. So anyway, what, what we... Um, conclude here. These stories illustrate, as we write, the confidence Israel is showing the world in protecting itself, as well as the confidence in reaching out against its enemies without the support of the United States, which it really doesn't have now. In fact, the weakness of the fading Biden administration is encouraging Israel in completing these tasks necessary for their own survival. So that's what we see. And again, uh, for more information on what's going on, what will go on, please see our book, 25 Signs. We're near the end on our website, Educating Our World, under the heading of Bible Prophecy. It's a free download where we go into great detail about the specific signs that the Bible predicts will take place before the second coming of Christ. And as we said, we've seen them happen. We've seen it occur in ways that are absolutely amazing. 70 different aspects of the 25 signs, 70 different details have already been fulfilled in these predictions, and another 30 are in the process of being fulfilled, showing the God of the Bible exists, He's in control of all things, and what he says about the future is coming to pass. All right, I'm Don Stewart. We'll be back later today where I want to talk about the Secret Service and how pathetic it is and how it you know, helped lead to what happened uh, just a week ago in Butler, Pennsylvania, and how how far the U.S. has fallen now. And it's a it's sad, but it's a you know it's something that's realistically um, for all of us. It's we viewed it the last three and a half years, and we'll see what happens in the future. We don't know, but what we do know is God is in control, and that's the key message. So don't be discouraged or disillusioned. The Lord Jesus is in control. All right, I'm Don Stewart. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, may the Lord richly richly bless.